All right, today we're gonna to be talking about the Inkbird IHC 200 Digital Humidity Controller. We're gonna talk about how to calibrate it and how to set it up for a mushroom grow with the settings. So these are, this is available on Amazon. The link is below on kit.com slash Myers Mushrooms. Please buy it through there so you can contribute to my channel. Thank you. Um, so this is the Inkbird IHC 200. Before you put it in your chamber, one of the things you wanna to do to it is you wanna seal up the probe. So this probe is just a cheap little probe. It's also available on, or it's available on eBay, but you can find it on my kit as well. And they're about three or four dollars each. And what you wanna do is you wanna seal up where the connection is. If you don't do this, it'll get corrosion. So you take a little bit of RTV and put it around there, let it dry up, you're good. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna calibrate it. So we're gonna calibrate it for high humidity. We're going over you know, 80, 90% humidity in the chamber. So we do what's called a damp towel method. So in this I have, the, the probe, and it's a Ziploc bag with a damp towel on it. And what, it, what happens is it makes a little environment of 100% humidity. And then we can calibrate this to read almost 100% humidity. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the settings with this. We're gonna go and hold the set button. And it'll go into the program. So right now HS, so that's the humidity set point. So we're gonna set at 91. I wanna point out that anytime you're doing settings on this, you want, to, um, you want to hold the set button to, to hit it. So I didn't ch make any changes, but if I, if, let's say I went and hit set, and I make changes, and I make changes, but I don't hold the set button, then nothing happens. It just goes back to the old setting. So what you got to do is you got to hold the set button, and then it, it keeps the changes. So let's go through all the settings um, for my grow and what I would recommend for like an oyster mushroom grow. So high setting, We're, we'll keep it at 90 for now. Hit set again. HD, so that's your humidity differential. So that means that if the humidity is, the, 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 or the, um, it won't kick back on until it's say five below. So if your setting's at 90, it won't kick back on until 85. So we're gonna set it a little bit less than five. I don't want it swinging that much. You want it to swing a little bit but not that much. So we're gonna set it at three. All right. DD, that's dehumidification. Don't worry about that setting, you're not using it. AH, that's your alarm high. I'm setting it at 99, you can set it at 98, whatever you want. So whenever you want the alarm to kick on saying, hey, something's wrong. That's the low alarm, low, alarm low. 50 is the highest you can go, so that's what I have it at. PT, this is your, uh, it's protection. So the purpose of this typically is for like a, uh, say like a, a compressor motor on an air conditioner or something like that, where you don't want it kicking on and off all the time because it'll blow the compressor up. You want to let it depressurize. Um, it's also for fans. You don't want fans kicking on and kicking off every second when the sensor reads high, low, high, low. So I'm going to set it at one minute. Uh, calibration, so I forget, I think we were at, we were at 97. So I'm going to go to uh, plus th three more. And that'll bring it up, or bring it up to, bring it up to five, 5.5. 5. All right. And then we're back at the second. So once again, you got a hold, set. Okay. So I calibrated a little bit high. Oh, my alarm's going off just because it's 90. That's fine. That's fine. So that's what the alarm sounds like. Right now, I calibrate it to where it reads 99.2, and that's fine. So close enough. You're you're within one degree. This is accurate to within three degrees or three not degrees, percents. So from there, let's go ahead and take it out so it stops beeping. And one of the things with these sensors is if they ever crap out on you and start reading 99.9, .9, you don't have to throw it away right away. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll pull it out of the chamber and then I'll let it dry out. I'm really dry here. I'm like teen humidity typically, like 17, 15 humidity. So it'll dry it out. Or you can take it out and put it in a bag of rice overnight and it'll, it'll kind of extend the life. Uh, to replace it, a lot of times you have to cut the wires and re-splice it because what happens is the connection goes bad. The actual, the, this guy, the, this guy goes bad. So you gotta replace the whole thing. But it's not too bad, it's just four wires. So, but yeah, this, this is a big upgrade from the old one that I was using. I was using this one before and it just had, uh, it just had the humidity setting, that's it. Didn't have a high alarm, didn't have the low alarm, it wasn't plug and play. I had to go and build a whole box for it, which was, it, it was fun to make, but it, it costed more in the end compared to this. This is about $35, um, yeah. So 
Now that you have it all set up, what I do is I just poke a hole in my top corner. One thing is you don't want this thing to get wet. If it ever gets wet from your humidifier or, or gets condensation on it, game over. It's just gonna fry it out. So what I do is I just run it, and for quickness sake, I'll just run it through here. But um, yeah, I just take it and, hold on a second. I hide it over in the corner. Oh shit, what just happened? What happened? Oh, I unplugged the lights. Shut up. Now it's having the low alarm. Uh, <laughs> so what I do is I take this thing and I'll run it through. I have a hole up in the ceiling that I'll pull it through and then it gets hung up over here way off in the corner to what that way it's not gonna it's not gonna get misted because my humidity comes down the aisle and if I say had it hanging right here it would get wet and and then it would get condensation on it and it would shit out or crap out on me sorry for that so yeah that's pretty much it that's how I how I do the humidification settings these aren't the greatest just because you got to keep fiddling with this every once in a while but hey for 35 bucks it ain't that bad and it lasts a few months typically if you don't get it wet Make sure when you're doing the wash down, when you're hosing it down and cleaning out the chamber, which I'm about to do right now, uh, that you remove the sensor. So yeah, right now, I, and for those of you who aren't familiar, right now I have that controlling the uh, humidif uh, humidification, which is the, it's a, a hydrofogger, hydrofogger mini fogger. And then uh, it just controls that. The circulation fan, exhaust fan, and other circulation fan are always on. So that's how that works. Not much to show in the chamber right now. I got back from leave, I took some weeks off, I had a bad batch as you can see right here, some green mold, so I lost 20-30 uh, bags from that. So I'm, I'm a little behind right now, so I figured perfect time to go ahead and I'm going to clear the whole chamber out, I'm going to leave the one batch that just went in like last week, and, uh, and I'm going to kind of do a reset in here. So yeah, that's it for, my, for today, hopefully my, you liked my uh, video on, on the humidification uh, sensor there. And uh, if you'd like to buy it, it's uh, available through kit.com or through Amazon, but the link is in kit.com. Please buy it there. That way I get credit for it. And at no cost for you, I get a commission fee for, for uh, promoting that product. So thank you. And uh, please give me a thumbs up, like it, like the video. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Keep on mushrooming. Have a good one. Bye.